At the dawn of Islam, millennia passed within the harsh desert territory of Arabia, when the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam, embarked on his great mission to spread the message of the Halima. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. There was an extraordinary man among his extraordinary companions with an extraordinary story. His name is Bilal, descended from an African mother from Abyssinia and enslaved by a powerful family in Mecca. He converted to Islam when he heard the message and he suffered for it. He was mushed on the streets and booed, stretched out, wept in the unforgiving sun with a huge boulder placed on his chest, crushing his ribs. Denounce, his master said, denounce and I will ease your suffering. But Bilal always responded with his shrill, drying out voice, la ilaha illallah. He would no doubt have died without denouncing had the Holy Prophet not sent Abu Bakr to secure his release. Bilal dedicated himself to Islam and became one of the closest companions of the Prophet. When the Muslims had to escape the persecution in Mecca for the sanctuary in Medina, Bilal was there with them on the Hijra. When they had to defend themselves from the aggression of the Meccans, Bilal was there battle to battle defending the faith. When they had to come together in Medina to build the first mocks, Bilal was there brick to brick to erect the first house for Allah. And when they needed someone to step up to call the Azan for the very first time, Bilal was there to step up in pride and confidence and to call out triumphantly, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. This man of African descent was there at the very foundation of Islam, helping to shape its formation and progress. And his story inspired the spreading of the faith across the continent, like Bilal. Millions of Africans were captured and transported across the desert and across the Atlantic to be enslaved in foreign lands. With their blood and toil, they built many so-called great nations of today. The continent of Africa itself was not spared. Its resources were pillaged to enrich many so-called rich nations of today. And for many in the so-called rich and great nations of today, they know little or choose to know little about Africa and how it has contributed to their well-being, except the stereotypes they see on the screens and read in the magazines. Do they not know that human ancestry traces its origins to Africa and that some of the very first sapiens walked this continent? Do they not know that some of the earliest civilizations of our time sprouted along the banks of the Nile? From Sudan to Nubia to Kush to Egypt, developing some of the earliest knowledge in agriculture, building technology, astronomy, calculus, and many others. Do they not know that the likes of ancient Ghana, Mali, and Songhai were among the most advanced and wealthy nations of their time with major cross-cultural Islamic influences? It is said that books were more valuable than gold in Timbuktu, which was an important center of learning in the world with people coming from far and near to study, research, and produce knowledge. Do they not know that when Islam entered Europe through Spain and brought with it great knowledge, culture, and enlightenment, the Moors from Africa were an integral part of that mission in Andalusia? Do they not know that Africa is not a country but the most diverse continent in the world with thousands of languages and different nations and cultures, each with their rich and colorful heritage? Do they not know that even after the weight of centuries of human and material exploitation pressing down on the chest of Africa, like Bilal, the continent remains unbroken, unbending, unyielding, ready to emerge into its own to the glory of Allah? Allah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Al Mu'iz, Al Mukadim is not stingy or discriminatory with his blessings. He glorifies those he chooses, when he chooses, how he chooses. Throughout history, nations have risen and fallen. No one people have had a perpetual claim to glory, power, and wealth. Once upon a time, Africa led the world in many ways. The baton did pass on 
but shall again return. As has been said by our beloved Huzur, Ayad Allah Ta'ala bin Nasr al-Aziz, Africa will rise and lead the world again. Our voices shall echo across the four corners, calling now the world to prayer. The true peace can only be found in God. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar.